Hey, what's up everybody? Cody from Detroit Speed here. We're back with another project update vlog. I know it has been a very long time since we've done one of these. We've got some new faces, we've got a new project, we've got a lot of cool things going on. So let's go ahead and get into it. How long have you been standing on this? What feels like years, Cody. What feels like years. <laughs> All right, Bruce, what do we got going on with Rogers 1968 Mustang? Um, finishing up on this battery mount I got back here. This piece of bolt down on here. And as you can see over on this side, the floor, it's not very flat. And it was the same scenario over here. So what we did was cut a large hole and stuck this plate down in there, which we welded some nuts to, so that our battery uh, mount will just bolt in right there and drop the battery in and good to go. So what have we done on this since it's since it's arrived? Because we haven't really talked about it in the vlog at all. Um, it's got the DSE Quadrilink here in the back. It's also got the Luma frame up front, custom exhaust, mini tub kit, rear bumper has been flush mounted, smooth that a little bit. Let me just grab this piece for you, it'll be easy to see it out here. Ooh, nice. This is where the speaker grill is gonna go. Well, that is the speaker grill, but the speaker will go behind that. And we had to modify these for the tubs, because they're obviously wider than the original. And to be able to get the rear fold down seat in, we had to custom make interior panels for it. So got a little bit of work to do on those. So is that just fiberglass? Yeah, it's a combination of the original, um, plastic and we molded fiberglass into it and did some reinforcements in the back side. Nice. And then we've got the chassis frame connectors. Set frame connectors. And then I know this is kind of like stiffening, but also just to bring the floorboard up a little bit, right? Just uh but yeah, basically stiffen it up, make it a little bit safer and more rigid. And obviously the trans tunnel's been modified and what, enlarged. What transmission is going in here? Uh T56. the outside of a speaker bucket that's mounted on the inside and this piece here is for our AC lines to come out from under there and we'll wrap up to the front to the compressor. Now we pretty much did this bucket because isn't this area kind of like just open to the elements? Yeah the fender covers that up so that keeps the speaker in there and like you said out of the elements. Nice. All right, so to get y'all caught up on Randy's K5 Blazer, uh, this is a 1972. We actually took the front the original Blazer um, front clip out and replaced it with a Toyota Tacoma. The reason for this, of course, is there's a lot more aftermarket support when it comes to uh, off-road suspension for the Tacoma as opposed to a 72 Blazer, so it just seemed like the, the best option. Of course, it's LS swapped with the, the Holley front runner kit there, and the Detroit Speed Brake Booster Master Cylinder Kit, and the Holley Intec Airbox. So, Curtis, walk, walk us through the inside what you've been doing in there. All right, inside, inside, inside. So on the inside here, flush mounted and recessed the gauge face, the Holly Pro Dash. That's the 12 and a half inch or 12.3. Yes, I, I believe it is. Yes. So instead of having an actual glove box, it's just gonna be like a tray to put your phone or keys or wallet or whatever in there. So at least there's still something there to function, just no. Yeah, the idea came to me from uh, Jeep models had that. Oh, nice. And speaking of Jeep models, if you didn't know, the running boards on this are actually from a Jeep AK. Of course, we have them off right now for they're off right now for metal finishing and door gapping. Buttoned this up and made it all flush and even and easy for body work. Get it all ready for paint. Been mainly working on tucking in the bumpers and pulling the grill in forward so it has a nice even gap all the way through. Match up to the fender and everything. Pulled it all in, really, really gives it more of a modern look. Yeah, that's a lot. A lot more clean. Look so old. Yeah, because these bumpers stick way out. Pretty modern, like a nice blending of vintage and modern. And what about the the closeout panel? So that was done to just hide all the ugliness that really happens underneath it. Did it all out of uh, 3003 aluminum. Now we've been working with engineering. They want to use the Odyssey battery, so they've been 3D printing this piece to fab up how it's going to work and should clear with everything that was previously done. All right, Josh, so we have Kevin's 1969 Pontiac GTO. It got painted a few weeks ago. I've uh, been working on some, some body work, wet sanding and stuff, but what is the plan for this from here? Try to get it, get the dash painted and then the firewall painted. It'll, do a, it'll be like a flat brown. It's an interior color to match the, the cream and the brown in the inserts on the seats. And then firewall will be a flat black. Now I got to bedline the trunk. What, uh, what color are we bedlining the trunk? Just it'll black. be black. It's black? 
And then what is the paint color for this called? Well, this is a um, mystic brown. It's a Mercedes color. Uh, how long do you think it'll be before we drop the body down on the chassis? I'm gonna try to get this on the chassis next week. I'm gonna try to get this all painted this week and get it done, and have it ready on the chassis and start putting Dynamat in the car next week. Nice. That way it can be wired. So we're actually getting pretty close with this one. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next one. We'll talk about more updates here in the shop. Don't forget to like and follow Detroit Speed on social media, and we'll see you next time.